ABC conjecture is a statement about this simple equation, A plus B equals C. But why study something so basic? Well, look at Fermat's last theorem. It has exactly the same structure as ABC if we just set A equals X power N, B equals Y power N, and C equals Z power N. Indeed, a version of the ABC conjecture does imply Fermat's last theorem. With this motivation, let's dive into ABC conjecture. The ABC conjecture says that if A, B, and C are positive whole numbers with no common factors and A plus B equals C, then the prime numbers that divide A, B, or C usually multiply to something not much smaller than C. Okay, that was a mouthful. Let's start with an example. 1024 plus 81 equals 1105. Now, 1024 is two to the 10th power and 81 is three to the fourth power. The number 1105 has three prime factors, five, seven, and 13. Note that A, B, and C don't share a common factor. This is a requirement for ABC conjecture to hold. If you multiply all the unique different prime numbers from 1024, 81, and 1105, you get 6,630, a number much bigger than 1,105. This kind of product is called the radical. The ABC conjecture says that this is the normal scenario. The radical of ABC is often much larger than C, but not always. There can be exceptions, and the conjecture says that such exceptions are finite. 3 plus 1, 25 gives 128, yet the radical is only 30. That's an exception. ABC predicts only finitely many of these exist. Having seen some examples, let us try to formulate it precisely. The first assumption is that the triplets A, B, and C should not share a common factor. In other words, their greatest common divisor is one. Here are some examples of such triplets. The ABC conjecture holds only when the GCD is one. Therefore, it doesn't apply to the last triplet, six, 21, and seven, whose GCD is three. Next, we need to compute the radical, which is just the product of all the unique prime numbers. Now comes the punchline. For every epsilon greater than zero, the radical of the ABC raised to the power one plus epsilon is greater than C, with finite exceptions. In our previous table, except for the last row, all cases have a radical greater than C for epsilon 0.5. In fact, the last row is the largest known exception so far. They're called Raysat triplets, found by Eric Raysat. The ABC conjecture has a large number of consequences. Probably the most famous consequence of the ABC conjecture is that it would imply Fermat's last theorem. I will now provide the flavor of the argument behind this. Fermat's last theorem says, there are no positive integers x, y, z satisfying this property for any n larger than three. Now for the sake of contradiction, suppose such numbers do exist. We'll let a equals x to the n, b equals y to the n, and c equals z to the n. That gives us a plus b equals c, which is exactly the kind of setup the ABC conjecture talks about. Applying the ABC conjecture says c is usually less than the radical of ABC. There can be exceptions to this, but conjecture says they are finite and can be individually checked. After a bit of simplification, we get an inequality that says z power n is less than z power three plus epsilon. But that can't be true because when n is large, z to the n grows way faster than z to the three plus epsilon. So we get a contradiction, meaning our original assumption must be false. Therefore, the ABC conjecture would imply Fermat's last theorem for all large exponents. The small cases can be checked separately. Of course, Fermat's last theorem was proven with a completely different technique by Andrew Wiles. Nonetheless, ABC conjecture is still one of the most important unsolved problems in mathematics. There have been a few claimed proofs. The most famous, coming from Shinichi Mochizuki. He published over a thousand pages of dense original mathematics, creating an entirely new framework called inter-universal Teichmüller theory. However, despite years of effort, very few people have been able to fully understand it. And most of the mathematical community still doesn't accept the proof as valid. 